Welcome once again to the channel of Baz. Today I'm going to talk about white noise and what we can be looking forward to using in the upcoming version of SNES Tracker. So one of my first early users, Niku, came into Discord and asked me about white noise with their aim to be using it to save space using it for things such as percussion instruments, hi-hats, maybe snare, who knows what else. And at the time I had mentioned how the noise will actually reflect the sample playback length, um, whether, or not, whether or not that sample is set to loop, for example. It also obeys the ADSR envelope settings, so that's really cool. And Niku asked me, oh, well, could it be possible? He may not have worded it this way. I should really say they, I don't even know. <laughs> but whether or not we could um, use like no space to get noise. And the short answer is that yes, provided you already have a looped sample you can just set an instrument, direct it to that looped sample, activate noise, and you'd be able to get the benefits of noise without having to have any other space used, except for the instrument itself, of course. But rather than just give you that easy answer, I, I tried out some experiment with SNES Tracker Debugger to see if noise would be produced properly with just a one block BRR sample of absolutely no sample data, but one block. And it was interesting what came out of that. And practically, you'll probably never use this. But if you want to learn some more about SNES Tracker Debugger, this is going to be really cool. So let's dive in. I'm going to open up SNES Tracker Debugger. And of course, as we go along, I'll comment on feature requests and other things that should happen in this software. This is Patreon after all. Uh, first thing I want to mention is I would love to get icons made for these two applications. But we're in SNES Tracker Debugger and we're going to open up an SPC. For this experiment, it's not important at all which SPC we open up as long as it's playing some music. So let me just go in and um, just load up any old SPC. Okay, there's an echo there, so let me just fix that. Let me just set that to Soundflower. This is just my recording situation. Normally, you'll have it in whatever you need, perhaps built-in output. Here we go. So we're hearing a piano and a bass. But now let's stop it. What I want to do is modify BRR data that's being used. We have a directory table here, right? This directory table has addresses of where BRR samples are located, but we're going to craft our own. So we're going to go to this directory address 700 and actually modify the table to go somewhere else in memory where we're going to make our own little BRR sample. sample. Um, alternatively, we can just modify the one that's at 716. And it's already looking a lot like how I want it to look. The loop point is set to the start address anyway, so actually let's use this. So 716 is the address, so I'm just going to take my mouse. Notice as I move my mouse around, the addresses over here to the right update relative to my mouse coordinate. Once again, our address was 716, so it's going to be up here. And you know it's up here because the blue guys are all BRR data. So I'm just going to go up. This is good. I click to lock the position. Notice we're locked and loaded here. Now I'm going to use my scroll wheel. Just come on down to 
the first BRR sample, which was, can you believe I already forgot? I think it was seven derp, seven sixteen. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. So right here. So we're going to set this to be an end block and we're going to want it to loop. That's going to be the number three here. You might be wondering, what, what, how does he know that's three? Well, do you want me to show you? I'll show you. So I'm going to open up Sublime Text then. Oh, great. Sense tracker is already open. And let's just go to my BRR uh, module here. And you'll see here's our header block of a BRR. The first bit is the end, and the second bit is loop. The first and second bit are set. We got it the number three. So let me just set that to three. It's all set. And then make sure everything else is zero, which it is. So now that we've modified the BRR data, I can go ahead and um, hit spacebar to resume playback. Notice how this is yellow now. This is the sign of a BRR end block. So we know it's working. Now we shouldn't be able to actually hear anything right now because the sample has no value. Let's just confirm that. I can only hear the bass is exactly what I expect. Um, let's go over to DSP now. And um, I guess I should comment that really low sound you're hearing. It's like, whoop, 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 whoop. I actually put a note in that's really, really low. And that's why you're hearing that. It's not like a glitch or anything. So um, getting back to this piece of data here, Watch what happens when we enable noise. So I'm just going to go ahead. I should be able to just toggle this on because this is my driver running and I know that I don't, that the engine isn't going to write values there so it won't get overwritten. However, if it was a different engine that constantly writes to these registers, just enable screw around and that will kind of let you access everything and play notes without letting the driver do its thing. If that makes sense. So I just enabled noise and let's hit play. And you can kind of hear something happening, but it's not really noise. Oh, because the noise frequency is so dang low. So we're going to go up here, set the frequency higher. Now it's just constant noise. That's reflected of the envelope here. Look at this envelope. Instant attack sustains forever. So maybe we want to sustain for a very short time. The engine is uh, rewriting the ADSR information. So that's going to need a, that's a call for screw around. See? So we, once we enable screw around, um, I can change that envelope. And just play around with it. We won't be able to hear the song anymore though. But I'm playing the notes now. You can see we've got some nice um, noise going on with a just one block sample. So that's interesting to just kind of see the kinds of ways you can hack SPCs in this program. However, like I was saying, practically speaking, just set the sample to be any sample already in your song that's looped and you'll be able to get the full feature of noise without any additional data for samples. So hopefully that was interesting. I, I do realize that there's still a lot to learn about Snitch Tracker Debugger. I mean, even just what the colors are, I should really do like an intro to like, what are all these colors mean? <laughs> and I will. That being said, that's going to do it for this video. So take care. See you around. Donate to SNES Tracker if you're watching this, if you haven't already. And for those that are donating, thank you so much. You are just making this project work for me. And 
Welcome once again to the channel of Baz. Today I'm going to talk.